Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Now we need to look at the tools that you can use to modify pictures that you have inserted. Once you insert a picture and select it, the Picture Tools Contextual tab appears in the ribbon with the Format tab displayed. This tab contains the main functions that you can use to format selected pictures. Note that this contextual tab only appears if you have an image selected within your presentation. The buttons available in the Adjust group allow you to make various types of image adjustments to the currently selected picture within your presentation. You can click the Remove Background button to remove the background from a selected picture. If you click this button, you will see the Background Removal Contextual tab appear in the ribbon. PowerPoint will then display the area that it will not keep in a purple color. You can use the Mark Areas to Keep or Mark Areas to Remove buttons to change your mouse pointer into a pencil that allow you to draw straight lines that indicate sections of the picture to keep or remove, depending on which button you select. The areas we have decided to mark to remove turn purple along with the background, alerting us that these sections will be deleted when we click to delete the background. You can also click the Delete Mark button to remove errant marks that you create. When you are ready to remove the background, click the Keep Changes button. If you wish to cancel the changes, you can click the Discard All Changes button to cancel the process. You can click the Corrections button to select the preset adjustment options shown in the Sharpen and Soften and Brightness and Contrast sections. Note that selecting the Picture Correction Options command at the bottom of the drop-down will display the Picture Corrections category within the Format Picture Task pane in PowerPoint 2013. If you are using PowerPoint 2010, the Format Picture dialog box will appear. We will examine changing the settings within the Format Picture Task pane or dialog box in the following sections of this chapter. You can use the Color drop-down button to select one of the many colors to apply to the image. You can also select different color saturation and color tone levels using this button. You can roll over the More Variations command to select a color choice from the palette of colors that appears. You can select the Set Transparent Color command and then click on a color within the image to remove that color from the image and replace it with Transparency. You can click the Picture Color Options command to open the Format Picture Task pane in PowerPoint 2013 or the Format Picture dialog box in PowerPoint 2010 and then set Advanced Color and Corrections options for the selected image. You can click the Artistic Effects drop-down button to select from many preset artistic effects that you can apply to the selected picture. You can click the Artistic Effects Options command to open the Format Picture Task pane for PowerPoint 2013. For PowerPoint 2010, the Format Picture dialog box will open. Using these panes, you can set advanced artistic effects options for the image, such as shadow, reflection, glow, and so on. You can click the Compress Pictures button to open a dialog box that allows you to compress one or more images in your presentation. First, set your desired compression settings in this dialog box. If you only wish to compress the currently selected picture versus compressing all of the pictures within your presentation, check the Apply Only to This Picture checkbox. Once you have the settings you desire, you can then click the OK button to compress the pictures in your presentation. Note that this is typically only done for graphics that are intended for web page display because smaller graphic files tend to load faster. This will also only work on pictures like JPEG and GIF files. You can click the Change Picture button to open the Insert Picture dialog box. 
You can then select a picture to substitute for the current picture without resetting any formatting or size adjustments that you have already made. The last button in the Adjust section in the reset is the Reset Picture button. You can click this button to reset any changes that you have made to a picture. Note that this button contains a drop-down arrow that allows you to reset either the formatting only or both the formatting and the sizing applied to the image by choosing your desired option from the drop-down menu of choices. The next group in the Format tab of the Picture Tools Contextual tab is the Picture Styles group. You can click on any picture style shown in this area to apply it to the selected graphic. If you simply hold your mouse pointer over any of the styles listed, you can preview how the style will affect your selected graphic. This can be a good way to preview what the image will look like before you actually select it. To add an image border, click the Picture Border drop-down button and then click on the color of the border to apply. Also note that if you want to quickly change the thickness of the picture border or add a dashed border versus a solid border, you can do that by using the picture border drop down as well. If you roll over the weight command in the picture border, the drop down menu that appears will allow you to select a different line thickness from the choices available. Also, you could roll over the dashes command to select the dashed line style to use. You can click the Picture Effects drop-down button to display a listing of the various stylistic categories available for use on your selected picture. Just roll your mouse pointer over the category that you wish to view in order to display a listing of assorted styles within that category. When you hold your mouse pointer over any style shown here, it will also be shown as a preview on the selected image within your presentation. You can then click on the style that you like in order to actually apply it in the picture. If you click the Picture Layout button, you can convert the selected picture into one of the Smart Art graphic styles shown. This allows you to incorporate images into your Smart Art and also add supplemental text. Simply select the style of Smart Art to apply from the choices shown in the drop down menu. Just as before, if you just hold your mouse pointer over each of the selected styles, it will give you a preview. In the Arrange group, you will find buttons that allow you to change the placement of the selected image in the presentation. If you have overlapping images in your presentation, you can click either the Bring Forward or Send Backward drop-down buttons to change the order in which the images overlap each other in the stack. You can click the Selection Pane button to toggle the display of the selection pane at the right side of the presentation on or off. The selection pane shows the selectable objects, such as pictures that you have inserted into your presentation. You can click the Align button to choose from one of the available alignment options displayed within the drop-down menu of choices. The Group button is not often allowed to be used in conjunction with images, but it is often useful when dealing with shapes. If you have multiple drawn shapes simultaneously selected in your presentation, you can click the Group button to group the individual shapes together as a single unit. In this case, the Group button is not highlighted, which means we do not have any shapes selected and we cannot use this option at this time. You can click the Rotate button to select a rotation option for the selected image in your presentation from the drop-down menu of choices. In the Size group, you will find the Crop button. You can use this button to remove unwanted or excess parts of an image. Click the Crop button and then click and drag inward 
on any of the cropping handles that appear around the graphic to mark those sections of the image as the parts that will be removed. You can then click the Crop button again to crop the selected parts of the image away. Notice how the border also now fits around the new selected image. If you make a mistake, you can uncrop by clicking the Crop button again and then dragging the cropping handles back outwards to restore parts of the image that were lost. We can then make our corrections and click the Crop button again. We can also click the Reset Picture button in the Adjust group to reset the picture back to its original state. You can crop an image to fit a selected shape or you can choose to crop an image to fit a select dimension ratio, like portrait or landscape. To crop an image to fit a selected shape, click the drop down button under the crop button and then roll over the crop to shape command. You can then select a desired shape from the side menu of choices that appears. To crop a picture to a selected aspect ratio, Click the drop down button under the crop button and then roll over the aspect ratio command. You can then select one of the aspect ratios from the side menu that appears. You can also use the spinner arrows at the right end of either the shape height or shape width spinner boxes to increase or decrease the height or width of the selected image. To make more specific changes to the image size, use the Advanced Layout Size dialog box. To open this dialog box, click the Advanced Layout Size dialog box launcher in the lower right corner of the size group. On the Size tab of the Layout dialog box, you can enter the height and width into the text boxes provided. To adjust the relational aspect, or height to width ratio of the selected image, ensure that the lock aspect ratio box is deselected in the scale section first. Then enter the height and width independently. You can enter a degree of rotation to apply to the image by using the rotation spinner buttons. In the scale section, you can enter a percentage into either the height and or the width text text boxes to scale the image by the selected percentage. You can also check or uncheck the two available check boxes in this section as needed when making size and scale changes. They allow you to lock the aspect ratio and to determine if the ratio used is based on the current image scale or on the scale of the original image. You can also click the reset button at the bottom of this tab to reset any change made to the size of the image. After making your adjustments, click the OK button to close the size dialog box and apply your changes. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.